in one meter. If there is no possibility, so we can increase the length of the flexible board. This is one cross section of the row. Generally, while distributing the dial, we should concentrate about the what is the ceiling height and what is the slab height. So between slab and ceiling only we can run the depths. According to availability of space above the ceiling, we define the what kind of duct shape we should use. Okay. It might be square, rectangle, and round duct, sometimes oval also. For example, we don't have the ceiling in particular room. Then these ducts will be exposed into the room. To better looking, we should use for the oval depths. And while doing the routing of the dial, we should concentrate about the path of the depth. Where is the feasibility is there to fit different sizes of the depth? Okay. Generally, we manufacture doubt according to uh, materials available in the market. GI, aluminium, SS, sometimes block iron also. In very rare case, we use black iron. And if we come into the thickness of the deck, okay, generally if we take the pipe, thickness will be high. Then that. So that carries only the air. So no need to go for high gauges of the sheet metals. Here we use less gauges of the diet. So we need to concentrate about the width of the diet and height of the diet. For this we have the different kind of standards like SMACNA. In SMACNA standard they specified like we should follow aspect ratio. Should be least one to four. Means we can make it one is to one or one is to two and one is to four. For example, our duct width is the 400 mm. It should be 100 mm. We should follow these kind of standards. So, for example, duct width is 400 mm. Our height is the 0.5 mm. Sorry, um, 50 mm. It is not acceptable. Most of the cases, this duct sizes depends on the how much air we are sending through the duct. And we should follow some 
uh, fundamental rules like thumb rules while designing the dial. As we discussed, wherever we connect to the diffuser or end terminals or equipments, we should connect with flexible type. And all the branches fitted with the VCD, value and control damper. Just if you see here, this is a value and control damper. So here I would like to show some pictures. Okay, where real in the site. This is purely for just for your information how it will be inside. This is one pharmaceutical warehouse. Okay. See. If we observe the room, we have the air terminals and or diffusers. Okay. So according to this, we came to know that we use the air terminals to the ceiling. See. If you observe this picture, here we have the diffuser. I mean, we are giving the supply to the condition air to this room. Okay. And some contamination happened in this room. And we need to send this cooling air to HU again. Through Return grills or return diffusers. Generally, in residential or commercials, we use one supply diffuser and one return diffuser here only. I mean, to see. In special case in pharma industry, we will give the all supply units in the top of the ceiling and returns to the bottom of the room. So here we will make the duct inside and this duct will go to the AHU again. AHU means handling unit. So here for better understanding of AHU, how it will be work and uh, I want to show small uh, clip for you. See, this is one AHU. Inside the AHU, we have the blower. We can call it as a fan or blower. Okay. See, supplier will be go through this time. See, if you observe the things, duct is coming from this one, HU, and these are the diffusers, it's connected through flexible duct.
This is purely for your understanding only. See, here we have the an equipment and component called value control dampers. It is motor driven. In value control dampers, we have two kind of things. One is the manual operating and the thing is motor driven. See, in this picture we discussed, air will go through this type to H. If you see the picture, in the video you can find it. This is a written grid and it will go to H. Okay. Just I want to recall, we have the four kind of systems in HVAC. One is the supply, return, exhaust, and fresh air. This is complete cycle of the air conditioning system. So why I am focusing more on HVAC is in MVP, HVAC is a major part. Generally, we will face a lot of problems with HVAC only. And uh, we will get a huge quantity of the ducts uh, which are passing through ceiling and passing through uh, shops. Okay. We need to control and we need to understand more about HVAC. In email. That's what I am focusing more on HSC to understand the things. This is the written grid. See, here you can identify one nozzle, okay, small nozzle. Why we need this kind of nozzles? Okay. For example, we are continuously supplying the air into room and simultaneously in the same way it's going back to AG. Here we are giving us some positive pressure to room. Okay. If pressure is not maintaining properly, there is a possible term some accidents. So to avoid this kind of accidents, this is a safety wall. To this we use 
mainly to control the pressure inside the room. In residential, commercial, most of the cases we will not use. But if we come into the pharma industry and electronic industry, we call this a clean rooms. For those things, we should maintain the, this kind of thing. So generally, these are the our MEP components. We will discuss later about this. Yeah. Again, it's a ducting. Here we have the GI duct and connected with place pull duct. Here you may got one doubt. You said you should use an less than one meter, but here if you see it's more than one meter. Why they used a flexible duct more length is this is a kind of uh, demonstration room there in that particular uh, construction area. It's a purely temporary. Okay. For that only they use a little bit more duct. They will remove later this one. But generally, we should use less than one meter only. If you see here, that is coming from bottom and contact is going upside and another duct is coming to left side. Okay. Here we use the T fitting. And if you see here, we are using Y fitting. Here one duct is going to this way. And the that will go in this way. So you will get some clear idea about in this picture. This component called as VCT, Value Control Dampers. We should remember while designing the that all VCD should be accessible. We should, I mean, uh, it should be easy to operate. If you see here, this is a flexible light. So if we attach this same GA deck to this machine, definitely we will get the noise. So to avoid this noise, we use it the flexible. This is what we call as technical area, means we place the AHUs and fillers. These boxes for AHUs, air handling units.
Okay. We place this actually top of the building and we connected this thing to the other floors. One side should be supply, another one is the return. Why I am trying to show all these things is if you get the real view, we will remember that for a long time. And this is a exhaust. See here, return that this is our AG. Okay, these pipes coming from the chiller. I mean, chilled water supply. Supply as well as return to chillers. Here, this is a return duct and this is a supply duct. We should remember here. Most of the cases we use the insulation to supply that only. This is our air cooled chiller. See, if you observe here, here also we use the flexible duct. This is a supply duct, we are using insulation. Here for chilled water also we use we have given insulation. And one more thing, if you observe this AGO, we have the one drain pipe. It will come under plumbing. Even we should show this in HVAC. Okay. So why drain pipe is required for AG? If we go back, I hope you are able to see it. Here we have the cooling currents. Okay. We supply the chilled water to through this cooling current. Here evaporated water will give the coolness. So this coolness will supply through this blower to our rooms. While evaporating, some something may form into the water stage. So to remove this water, we need this drains. Okay. 
why we need to remove this water means every AHU should be clean inside see if you see this AHU part okay, here we place a different kind of the filters okay. if I go in about the filters it will it's a very big subject so as of now I don't think we required it <coughs> for chiller water we use walls so even we discuss this one also These are the walls. Okay, this is balancing wall. If you see the picture in real world, this is the balancing wall. These are the ball walls. This is uh, another kind of the AHU we call as double decker. One is a return and one is a supply. Okay. Here we use the round duct. Observe this AHU. Here we use the transition or reducer. Okay. This reducer is from rectangle to round. Okay. This kind of reducers also we use in Revit. So Here we need to discuss little bit about the BIM. Okay. So generally in simple terminology, BIM is the what we are going to do in real life. We should implement in same thing in software. Okay. For example, we are constructing the house on health. In design stage only, we, we, we need to develop that building in any software. Here, different kind of elbows. We need to more focus about our fittings, whether duct fitting or pipe fitting. Okay. So I am explaining more about the fittings. See here, this is the AHU rectangular tool, round. And again, duct size is reducing. Okay. If we observe the duct here, we have the one diffuser here. Okay. 
in Revit also we have this kind of option. So in reality this is a possible. So if we think about the Revit in previous versions we don't have this kind of option in Revit. So let me show one thing. Just for your information. Able to see here terminal and duct. I hope everybody can see this. Okay? This is a situation. This is kind of problems we will generally will get uh, inside leakages and gaps between the duct to duct connectivity. Here, what we use, we use some packing materials. Again, yesterday we discussed about the end caps of the duct. See, this is one kind of end cap. No voice is coming or very low voice is coming? Very low. I think they want it to be a little louder. Yeah, so uh, Anju and Pallavi, I just wanted to check with you guys if, you know, you're finding the volume too low or, you know, what the issue is. Because, no, sir. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Is it okay, Anju, in Delhi, is it okay for everybody, the voice? Yes, sir. Okay. You, you're, able to hear, you're able to hear Nagraju uh, well, is it? Yes, sir. This is quite fine with me. There's okay. no problem. No problem, is it? Okay, because I just called up Tariq just now and he was telling me that it's very low, the voice is very low. So I just thought I'll check uh, with me, you. Yeah, even Tariq sir uh, checked out with me also. I, I, I told him that uh, maybe this this is an internal problem because this is fine with me. It's Absolutely fine. Fine, fine, fine. fine. And uh, Pallavi, what about you in Bangalore? Is it okay? Uh, so we are just checking up the new speaker, sir. 
Okay, so Pallavi, the problem is at your end because your voice is actually very low there. So it looks like you know some problem there in Bangalore. So we'll give you about two minutes to just settle down, and then Nagraju would continue after two minutes. Should yes, that sir. be okay, Pallavi? That should that should be okay. Yes, sir. That's okay, sir. So, Anju, for about two minutes, uh, we'll just wait for the Bangalore team to settle down, and after two minutes, we'll continue with this. Yeah, definitely, sir. No problem. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, in between, can I have? Yeah. Sure, uh, Anju, go ahead. I'm sorry to bother. Yeah, listen, sir. If can I have a, I mean, a word with Mr. Nagaraju? Yeah, sure, sure. I'll just what I will do is that uh, I'll just mute myself and I'll. You know, I'll, I'll just give it to him. One second. Okay. No. Yeah, I hope everybody clear from now. So. Uh, yeah, good afternoon, Mr. Nagaraju, Anju, this side. Yeah, good afternoon. How are you? I'm good. Uh, Thank you for sharing that uh, all the materials and uh, okay. yeah and I hope we are going to get this uh, the all these PPTs later on. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, because I feel that this will be really helpful uh, because uh, they, I mean, in uh, most of the time we get the students, uh, uh, the mechanical students, which are actually not experienced with HVAC, so we can actually explain to them. That yes. what is uh, all about HVAC and uh, if we have these pictures and all that, that will really help. Yeah, they whatever I have shown the pictures is uh, is helpful or uh, giving a more information or not? Yes, this is very very helpful and uh, this is uh, I mean I think uh, seeing everything in pictures in an in real world really helps and yeah. uh, because we uh, whatever we were just doing that was only. Uh, totally based on the uh, theory, but this yeah. time we are uh, we are able to see everything in a in real world. Uh, yes. Sir. So yeah, that's really helpful, and I just request you to please uh, share some of the pictures so that I can also share with my students later. Yeah, on. De definitely. Actually, my my intention is this HVAC purely related to practical oriented. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, if you have the practical experience only, we so we can understand easily. Otherwise, it's like electronics. We can't see. Uh, you, yeah. Yes. So that's yeah, why whenever, I'm giving more yeah. clarity. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Oh. Yeah, if you need anything, let me know. Yeah, definitely, sir. I, I'll mail you if, if I require any other information. Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. I've just Thanks. got information. Thanks, I, I've just got information from Bangalore that things are fine there. So I think you know we'll continue with the uh, presentation. Okay, I'll uh, maybe I'll I'll do. I think I'll also check with you know Mumbai. Uh, Sheetal, are you there? And Sheetal, are you there in Mumbai? Okay. So in any case, uh, do let me know if you know you have any uh, problem uh, hearing Nagraju, and he's going to continue with the presentation. Hey, yeah, welcome back. See, I hope these features might uh, give the clear idea what is uh, HVAC going on in real site, okay? And here in MEP, we have the major issue with the coordination of these services. For example, while showing these all photographs, you might find the other features like pipes and uh, red color pipes with so for example you don't have idea on about the what is MEP we can call like this one red color pipe white color pipe this kind of language we need to use so if you are aware about the MEP we can say what kind of pipe is it what kind of product is it so in this way I am going to show the pictures for example here I have one 
photograph okay um, might be everyone able to see this okay just clear idea about the MEP I am showing this picture okay whatever we have this red color pipes belongs to fire for protection okay fire fighting is different fire production is different okay fire protection is what we place the fire system in our building fire fighting is where the external body come when the fire accident occur and they will do some activities those called as a fire fighting if we observe the things here these things are the cable trays okay these are the fire fighting and whatever insulated ducts these are the supply ducts okay where we find non insulated ducts these are the return ducts this is a combination of this all MEP services if you see this pipe it belongs to plumbing drainage systems okay I will explore about this plumbing system in detail later but to get what we are going to discuss just I am showing this picture to you If I come back to the presentation we discussed for every branch we should use the VCD okay and we should use the fire dampers where is fire rated walls are there uh, as I hope uh, you are all belongs to architecture and civil background so we should aware about the fire rated where we use fire rated walls wherever we use the fire rated walls we should use the fire damper the fire damper should be within the wall so which is automatically operate Most of things we discussed these things where we need to use a flexible duct and where we need to use the traps and drains for HU and uh, where we should provide the dampers. See, this is the another side of this duct designing. in air conditioning system we have the two different domains one is the calculating the and one is the calculating the duct sizes these are most important things in duct designing we use the basic three methods one is the velocity method and one is the equal friction method and static region method. These three methods are included in Revit. See here, we generate the drawings generally. Okay. 
when we generate the drawings wherever we provide the design so we generate the drawings for HVAC we have the some standards for ducting for supply ducts we should use this kind of symbol with thick lines and return ducts we use dash lens with cross here I specified as a positive pressure means giving the pressure to room means supplying the air to the room here negative pressure means one is a exhaust this is the symbol for the exhaust and this is for the fresh air okay sometimes if you give the all dashed lines here including this and this it means when that is going to the down floor we should a uh, little bit uh, concentrate on this one if we get all dashed lines that will go into the down floor if we have this kind of symbology that will go into the upper floor here one more major important task in uh, selecting the diffusers in say terminals <clears throat> first we should concentrate on the airflow how many CFMs we need for particular room and what is the throw we require for example we have the one diffuser to ceiling okay and we work on one table the throw of air conditioning air required to ceiling to table is enough no need to throw up to the ground level okay this is a designing part uh, and another thing is noise level we have the standards for noise also how much db we require per room okay and second thing is the appearance and the other thing is the space availability okay for example if we take one conference room we provide the grills so what we do we will reduce the fall ceiling height in some uh, some area along the wall and we will place the grills okay. why we need to place the grills like that is air conditioning is throw coming from the grills to up to table level again it will reflect and go into the other side of the grills And here indication of this air terminals here it is a supply it's a exhaust here if you see this this is one-way diffuser if you give the indication like this one way and if you give that it, two ways and three ways and four ways so thermostat it's an instrument to control the temperature it will recognize the required temperature and put up the air conditionings and while designing the distribution system or duct system we should
concentrated this specified points here is mainly pressure losses for example if you use the more elbows and more tees and more reducers okay, because of friction velocity of the hair is reduced so to avoid the this kind of losses we should concentrate on designing of the duct i mean we need to reduce the usage of the fittings if the pressure loss is the more what will happen okay as we discussed in ahu we have the fan called a blower this is the blower inside blower we will have the fan okay let me let me show the picture also this is the blower we should know major difference between the blower and the fan so fan what will take it will take the air from from front and it will give the return back from the back in blower this kind of structure will be there so air will take the side from side and throw into the another side i mean it will take from one side of the ahu and throw it to the another side of ahu see here air will take the that side of this ahu and it will throw into the this side okay if you observe here also we have the flexible duct again to avoid the noise these are the lowers these are diffuser these are all in construction stages stages where i visited a construction industry so i am trying to give the more information that's why i am moving it um, little bit uh, things try to adjust the thing see here we are here okay we are discussing about the pressure loss if the loss will be more what will happen while selecting the fan whatever we have seen in photographs 
capacity of the fans will depend on the static pressure of the duct. Static pressure means we have done all duct designing and duct routing. In that particular duct designing, we will take the longest duct routing from AH to air terminal. Okay. And taking the longest duct routing, we calculate the pressure. Then according to that pressure, we will select the fan. Because that fan should be through the air up to the, the air terminal. So that's why we'll take the long distance of the duct. This terminal we call as a static pressure. So in this way, we design the ducts. Okay. See, if you observe the things here, we are calculating the cooling loads and duct sizes and generating the drawings. Okay. Uh, I should everybody uh, understanding this point. This is a little bit uh, need to understand this thing. Okay. We are designing and generating the drawings. Before AutoCAD and uh, these Revit softwares, we use it to draw manually with pencil, scale and paper. Okay, so with paper and pencil we are generating the drawings and in middle we generated using the CAD and now we are generating the drawings through Revit some, some other softwares. So why we need to generate these drawings? Okay, and what is drawing? I hope everybody knows this one. Again, I'm reminding. Drawing is a engineering language. Okay. This, why we are calling as a language we observe the HVAC, we are designing some places and executing in some places. So information is communicating through drawings only. So whatever we use for communication, we can call as a language. So drawing is a engineering language. Okay. So why this BIM? So far we are discussing about this BIM, building information modeling and things. Okay. In previous days, to providing the drawings to architects and structural engineers and MEP engineers, not organized way. To reduce this gap, we should organize the on a proper way to generate the drawings and to make the communication in easy way. For that, this 
BIM come into the picture. So with the help of BIM, we are organizing the documentation distribution in proper way. This is a, one of the main purpose to implement the BIM. See. So this Revit is one to one of the tool for the BIM. So everybody will accept it one, right? So here, if we take the Revit, we are calling it a 3D software. And it's a component based software. Here, what is a component? Somebody may say family in Revit, dot RFA. This dot RFA is the supported format to Revit. Its component is whatever we are manufacturing in industry and what is available in the market. So according to manufacturer information, we will create the family and we use in the Revit. This is basic concept of the Revit. So somebody may get doubt. So we are using and uh, only cubicle families and uh, uh, just outer dimension drawings kind of things. If you think about the designing, we have the different levels. Okay. In BIM terminology, we call it as LOD, level of detailing. Level of detailing is to generate the drawings only. We have another LOD, level of development or level of design. Level of design means we have the different kind of things. For example, schematic designing, basic designing, and detailed designing and construction documents, fabrication drawings. So somebody may get doubt where we use the fabrication drawings and where we use the construction drawings. This is another subject again. And next LOD is the as built drawings. For these things, we can produce the drawings in 2D because this is a level of design. If we come into the level of detailing, LOD, according to BIM, we are generating the 3D models and 3D drawings. Okay. If you give the perfect component that will come into the construction documents and construction stage. If you give the outer dimensions, that may give the different LOD. See here, it's a Revit also 
developed in the same process level of detailing basis for example in my schematic stage of designing just if we take that I will draw only single line diagrams okay for example if I taken one duct here okay and just I will put in course course means my basic designing stage okay see just I am going with size width is 300 and the head is 300 okay I am not going there just I am giving the brief about it okay see here this is a 300 and height is a 300 that is okay forget about and offset and all those things now here we are discussing about LODs see now I am in See, just I have the single diagram, single line diagram here. Okay, here medium level and fine. So I'm getting double line diagram. Here single di line diagram we may call as basic designing stage. While working, what I'm doing, I'm taking the same size with detail engineering level. But if my customer asks, I will produce this kind of drawings only. This is one of the advantages. Everybody knows this. Just I am reminding. Okay. Coming to the HVAC designing revit. See everybody knows about this uh, Revit is a template based software. So I am taking new template now. Okay. Here systems. Systems means MEP. Whatever have the systems in MEP, we will have available here. Just taking. Okay. Just save as a project. Let's say test one. Okay. Here. Yeah. Before starting any project, we should give the project information, especially in MEP project. Okay. Here we have the energy settings and the location. 
why I am giving location is to calculate the heating load and cooling load we should have the geographical coordinates lat lands this is a mandatory thing I might have some internet problem here. Here we will get the Google map and we can identify the location proper way. Okay, so what will happen here? I will select the location of the map. Okay, maybe some firewall setting is a different here, so that's why I'm not getting the map. Uh, I will try to show in next class this one. I will rectify this problem and show you. For time being, now I will go with location and I will find out the particular location of the building. When I see the weather conditions, in what is the dry bulb temperature, wet bulb temperature, I came to know. From map only and available database of the ASHRAE, it will take. Okay. So yesterday we discussed about the what is the dry bulb and what is the wet bulb. Dry is the, dry bulb is the it's a normal thermometer to measure the temperature. Wet bulb is the, we mask it with the wet cloth and take the temperature. This is the most important thing to do the HVAC calculations. Okay. And uh, type of the building, everything we will discuss in heat load calculations. This one, okay. Okay. So now I just placed the location to get the dry bulb and wet, wet bulb. Here. where I need to do the heat load calculations. Without architecture and structure, there is no MEP. I mean, we should have the building to calculate the heat load or cooling loads. And we should remember, while doing the architectural Revit model, we should work in very proper way. For example, if you take one wall here, just I'm giving the wall. Okay. So I selected this wall and edit type. Okay. Structure there is no thermal resistance. Why there is no thermal resistance? Because there is no material assigned. Yesterday as we discussed, This is U factor or thermal resistance. Each material has its own thermal resistance. Okay. In same way here also. If I assign any material,
for example i am going to assign a brick general brick now see we are getting the thermal resistance so while doing the architectural model we should concentrate on materials also this is the one of the reason to get the exactly load calculations for example as a reseller company capricard if we go into one customer the customer will say we, we are not getting accurate heat load calculations in revit simple but they don't know why they are unable to get the exactly values so walls doors windows floors roofs these are the major components in e transfer okay. without giving any materials so they will not get accurate load calculations is so one one of the reason see here just i'm going to top constraint to level 2 here another option we have called is in architecture we have the room okay i am placing the room and in analyze i have the space okay i am placing the space here as a revit user we should know difference between these two things okay if we take the room okay we are not getting the thermodynamic properties or thermal properties or which are useful to heat load calculations okay so if we take this space we will get the all properties which are useful to calculate the heat loads okay here to calculate the heat loads we should give the all inputs for example this is one room okay which is a room height is 4 meters so value map the room is something okay so while calculating heating load or cooling load mostly we will focus on the value map the room see first input we will give as electrical lighting loads here we need to calculate how much electrical heating we are getting for example we have the fan something uh, Uh, lights okay. for each light how much heat we are getting And for each fan how much heat it's generating if you use the ohm appliance how much heat they are producing so all those things we need to give the in electrical lighting loads so generally according to this lighting calculations we have the standard 
books like hashray handbook for example one light is giving this much of lux means lighting okay for that much lux what is will be the ceiling reflection okay will be the wall reflection we will get the all standards in the handbook or we can say code book according to those book we need to enter these values again electrical loads for example we are using uh, fans and motors okay so for that information also we need to enter here again mechanical flow this information we will get after calculating okay then dimension of the rooms we know this one this is a major part to calculate the heat loads see here here we have two options one is the plenum and another one is the act paper for example if we take one room okay above the ceiling we call as a plenum okay and below the ceiling we call as act paper sometimes we will construct the plenums through duct materials like duct only plenum nothing but collecting the air okay for example one room we are placing one supply diffuser and one retain diffuser just i will show here this is a room okay i'm taking air terminals this is a supply diffuser for example i am placing here okay another supply is placing here okay and this is a retain diffuser this is a retain diffuser this is a thumb rule if you place for supply diffuser you should place retain diffuser and supply diffuser and retain diffuser alternatively this is a thumb rule in hvac designing so here yeah, for this supply duct we will connect with the duct from ahu sometimes in residential what we do we will not construct the return duct all gap above this ceiling are duct only we will consider as duct we will make some panel kind of shape at ahu and that internal fan suck the return air through the entire above the ceiling part so that's why sometimes we use plenum we select the space here called as a plenum okay here again condition type whether we need heating load or cooling load or only cooling load so i will go with the cooling load here space type space type means what is the purpose of the building or room okay if we go here we will get the different kind of 
room types already inbuilt in the Revit. Let's say this is a auditorium. Okay. See, if we change, this value will be changed. These are the predefined ones. Why we want, we can change. But most of the things taken by the standards. So no need to change. If you find it's required to change, you can change, no problem. For example, I am taking the some audience bank customer area. Okay. If you see this area per person. Okay. This is the most one of the important thing to calculate the air conditioning. So everybody should get comfort. We are design, designing the HVAC for comfort only. And sensible heat gain for person and latent heat gain for the person. We know what is the sensible heat and what is the latent heat. Okay. Again, lighting load density. Not lighting load, density of the lighting load. Again, we will get this from the books. Power load density. And here, plenum lighting contribution, as we discussed about the ceiling. Okay. Here, occupancy schedule. Here, see, occupancies schedule, I am browsing here, okay. Here we can create the new. If you take the bank, bank working hours might be morning 9 to evening 6, let's say. According to that, we need to give the factors, okay. So we need, we can create and uh, as a restaurant, otherwise office lighting. Okay, now bank is nothing but office, so we can say office lighting like this. See here, 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. Okay, then lighting schedules. Based on the timings, we will get it. Okay. Then construction type, as we discussed, we should create the new construction and we should assign the values of U factor. Okay, We need to give the values here as well as we need to assign the materials in architecture. Okay, For example, in architecture, We have given this as how much? 0.37, okay, 3704. This is for walls. Construction type one. We can create the number of constructions here, new and duplicated, okay. So for example, I'm taking the external walls, okay. Here we should select which is the nearest to three. Brick wall, point three, three. We need to select the nearest one. Okay. Even you want exactly that one also, you can create. Okay. There is a document called construction. And see. program data
we will find one HTML document we need to create on that one okay I will find out and show you we can create our own U factor also okay. so just I am giving approximate values will not get exactly result just I'm giving that's it I am explaining only way okay now here people specified okay if you know we can specify otherwise we can give the default values okay even since bull and latent it also we can specify or we can make as a default actually actual designing we should give according to standard and electrical load also lighting loads and power loads power density and load you want to specify it okay power density you don't know power density you know power load you go for with power loads so sometimes we need to give both if you know both okay design cooling load it will get automatically then analyze heating and cooling loads okay here again this is new construction okay sliver space tolerance okay this is kind of tolerances here building construction type whatever we are given we will get here and building class this is most important thing here we need to give loose medium tight what is loose what is medium what is tight yesterday we discussed about the infiltration okay air pass through wall gaps and doors gaps and windows gaps if infiltration is more we may choose loose if infiltration is medium medium infiltration is, there is no infiltration you can go with tight okay use load credits we have the one uh, HVAC designing we use some kind of credits okay credit means some safety factor again detail about the space here we need to discuss one thing outdoor air information okay see outdoor air per person one person what is the pressure required how many liters per second and outdoor air for area for one square meter how much outdoor air required this is according to ASRE standard okay we need to go through standard booklet and we need to give the inputs there see here we are able to easily understand what is the outdoor air per person and what is the area for sorry air for area so easily we can understand this stuff but here what is the air change per hour okay air change generally we discuss like 10 air changes 20 air changes 30 air changes like that what is it exactly what is air changes for example if you take one room okay this we may take this room we fill it the air in room and we empty the room 
we are filling the air and releasing the air okay so in one hour how many times we are filling the air in room and how many times we are releasing the air these cycles we called as air changes i hope you understood this how many times air is vacating from room in one hour called as air changes okay generally we will take 20 air changes like this okay so then calculate okay whatever project information we have given here we will get it and building summary okay here we need to discuss one more thing psychometric this is the most important chart in heat load and cooling loads i hope you no need to calculate this just for idea you should know about what is psychometric okay so tomorrow i will show this chart to you if you want to calculate manually we should use this chart what is the dew point temperature how much sensible heat is we are getting and latent heat and uh, dew point everything we will get from that a chart in revit this chart is inbuilt so directly if you take the one location and temperatures it will give the automatic values okay and so this is a space called one room okay this one space area is this much and volume is this much the cooling load is this much okay heating load is this much see here cooling air flow this means we are calling in cfm this we are measuring in cfm or we can measure in liters per second also thirty four kilowatts of cooling load need this much of flow okay so remember this thing now we are forgetting all those information we are concentrating ea for duct distribution let's say this is 13000 liters per second okay i am going to go fast see for this room i need to supply 13000 liters per second so my diffuser capacity is according to manufacturer let's say 1000 liter per second supply diffuser okay, 1000 liters per second so how many diffusers i need to place here divided by let's say 1000 so 13 diffusers I need to place supply so then I will place a 13 diffusers with the flow rate of 1000 liters per second okay. and same times the diffuser manufacturer will give the pressure drop for particular diffuser pressure drop means a cooling air is recharging in room on the discharging point what is the pressure was there what will be the pressure will be they will give in catalogs according to this information only we will select the diffusers and we will place the diffusers in particular room again we draw the 
that routing from A H to particular room. This is a fundamental thing how we will calculate the heat load and cooling, cooling load and how we calculate the number of diffusers required. In tomorrow session we can go with how to draw the duct and how we need to take the dimensions and things. See, I am focusing more on HVAC. It's more important for the building and Revit. If you do perfectly this HVAC services in Revit, you can automatically you can do all services in easy manner. Concept is the same, but we use instead of that, we use the pipes kind of things. I hope everybody will agree about it. Okay. Uh, so I am going to close this session today and we will continue tomorrow. And uh, I really thank you very much for your patience. <laughs> and if you have any clarifications and doubts, you can send uh, email or if still you need any clarification, you can call to me, we, we can discuss in depth. Okay. lines in Bangalore so was it okay was there too much of content that was you know delivered today or was it okay today Can you... <laughs> Delhi I have opened the lines in Delhi also uh, hello hello yeah uh, so is this Bangalore or Delhi Yes, Anju. Yeah. Yes, Anju. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, very well uh, delivered by Mr. Nagaraju, and uh, I hope uh, we'll get to learn more and more in uh, regarding uh, especially HVAC. Okay. So, in fact, I hope it was clear and all that. There was a little bit of, you know, what do you say, you know, voice problem initially. I hope all that was okay. And in terms of content, is this okay? The pace at which he is going, is that okay, Anju? Yes, sir. Perfect. Oh. Okay, okay. 
and uh, maybe let me also check with you know people in bangalore just one second and anju is it only you or you are talking for everybody in delhi uh, sir um, tarik sir and uh, actually i am attending it from my home because i was on leave today okay okay so maybe uh, may, maybe uh, let me let me open up the line with uh, tarik and maybe check with him you know yes, like, sir. Uh, yes just sir. one second please yes definitely so, uh, tarik are you there on on the call Hello. Yeah, I'm there. I'm. I'm attending. Yeah, yeah. Only yeah. initially we uh, start. We were having problem with the sound. Okay, okay, okay. There was some problem with the system only, but uh, within five minutes we rectified it and we. It's a very nice session. Very uh, useful. Okay. And. Uh, and I hope uh, Tarik, you're talking for everybody in Delhi, right? Or uh, does yeah, anybody yeah. have? With okay. me, Preeti is there on okay. on the outside. Uh, Dinesh okay. and uh, Shab, uh, Dinesh and Asia is all, are also okay. attending this session. Okay, so I because hope uh, Dinesh, Asia, Preeti, was it okay for you? Was the pace okay, or was there too much of content that was delivered? Any one of you can respond. No response. They are sitting outside. Dinesh is there, <laughs> I think so. Okay, okay, no problem, no problem, Tarik. So anyway, I heard it from you. Asia. So. the class i think okay i got a class no, no problem in fact in terms of content you find it okay right uh, in terms of uh, the amount of content that was delivered today okay yeah so uh, let me go to bangalore now and uh, what about uh, the team at bangalore ravindra pallavi what about you people was it okay Okay. Okay. And uh, in fact, you know, uh, do you guys have a little a bit background about MEP or is it, you know, the first time that you are listening to something about MEP? Okay. 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 So I hope the amount of content that was delivered today was enough, or you felt we should go a little more slow. was the amount of content that was delivered today was it okay or was it too much actually you felt but uh, we wanted to go a little faster you wanted him to go a little faster is it see i tell you the only reason is that uh, in fact what happens is mep is a subject which is uh, which is not you know so very interesting like revit architecture so that's the reason we going a little slow because for some people you know if you already heard it then you want to you want him to go fast but for somebody who is not having much of you know touch on this they would like him actually to go a little slow okay so in any case i think you know we have next four days so in case we we have this kind of feedback from everybody maybe you know we could go a little faster okay and yeah anybody else in bangalore uh, can i know who all are there with you pallavi in bangalore Okay, 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 okay. So I hope uh, for everybody it was okay, right? Today, and uh, especially for Ravindra because he skipped his uh, compensatory off and he's part of this training. I hope it is useful to you. Yes, sir. Okay. 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 So let me also see if you know I can get some response from Mumbai also. Just one second. Uh, Sheetal, are you there? Okay. So in any case, uh, you know, since I'm actually not getting a response from Sheetal, so so maybe uh, we'll again connect tomorrow at uh, two o'clock. And uh, you know, as always, if you guys have any feedback, please uh, send your mails to me and. Uh, you know whatever we can better for tomorrow's presentation we'll try our best to you know and do that so thank you guys and then uh, you know what do you say tomorrow at 2 o'clock